three main goals for today's Titan Speakerman build are 1. Make him as accurate as possible. 2. Give him as much detail as possible. And last, but probably most importantly, make him with one objective in mind. Defeat G-Man Toilet. Meet our starting figure, Alpha Wolf. I figured he'd be a good warrior to use because he finished second in our Series 2 tournament. Plus, I had an extra one lying around. All we gotta do is remove the head and gauntlets and we'll be ready for fabrication. And guys, make sure you watch all the way to the end to see how this one turns out because it's probably my new favorite custom and I think you guys are really gonna like it too. For Titan Speakerman's face and back speakers, I decided to use Black Fimo. But that wasn't my first choice. I wasted a couple of hours cutting foam and trying to wrap it in epoxy clay. That wasn't the way I wanted to start the build, but I was hoping to reduce the weight of the figure by using this technique. Instead, I found that it was way easier to cut the Fimo into the shapes I needed, then assemble them all together like building blocks. And because the Fimo is so firm, it's easier to add details to it. It also turns out that the weight of the speakers don't add up to much at all. After cooking the Fimo, it was time to permanently attach the speakers to the body. The head will be glued to this nail that I'm attaching to the neck area with some plastic. The back speakers were a little more difficult and I found that it was a lot easier to glue them on in the right position. Then add a nail connector after they were firmly attached. Titan TV Man was our first battle giant to feature magnetic armor. It's nowhere near as complicated as original battle giant armor, but it gives them a lot more defense. The concept is simple. Armor attached by a magnet blocks the split strike button from contact. Only after you knock the armor off can the warrior be split. Okay, I'm satisfied with his defense, but what about his offense? I was really hoping to use some highly detailed 3D printed hand cannons and jetpack thrusters for the build, but upsizing the design kept causing it to fail, and I could only get it to work on a scale that was way too large for our figure. Eventually, I came to the realization that I would have to make everything from scratch. And since I had to make two jetpack engines, and two hand cannons, I was scrambling for ideas to easily mass produce identical designs. I ultimately ended up using a red pencil for the hand cannons and a 3 8 inch wooden dowel for the jetpack engines. And of course, I wrapped everything in epoxy clay. After the clay hardened, I had to grind all the details into the hand cannons and I realized that I shouldn't have to be doing stuff like this. I really want to get to the point where I can shape objects exactly how I want them and towards the end of the video I feel like I took a couple steps in the right direction. I'm still trying to use the 3D printed thrusters at this point and I'm thinking that maybe I can just use the bottom portion of it 
and attach it to my epoxy covered dowel. That didn't work either, but I still wanted to use the 3D print, so I decided to use the dowel by itself. And by now, I was really falling behind time-wise, and I decided to stop messing around with hand tools, and I busted out my DeWalt cordless miter saw. This thing is perfect for cutting dowels. After all that, here I am finally grasping the fact that the 3D print is way too big to use on our figure and I'm being forced to get creative and rely on my skills. I think it was the smell of the sawdust that woke me up. Before finishing the jetpack, I mounted the hand cannons to ensure that I don't have parts bumping into each other. And after the first few test swings, I can see everything is working perfectly and nothing is going to stop me at this point. I make the decision to mount the jetpack with magnets so we can easily remove it before combat because I just know this thing is going to weigh a ton and if we're going to beat G-Man Toilet, we need speed. I'm also using leftover epoxy clay to add more details to the hand cannons and patch some holes in the speakers. We're finally ready to paint and check out my paint rack. I think I gotta buy more paints now. The design included a handle and paintbrush holders, but I think I'll leave it like this for now in case I need to add to it. The paint scheme for Titan Speaker Man is really simple, but I just know if I get one little thing wrong, Eddie and Clark are going to spot it immediately. And after watching episode 57 about a hundred times, I think I got it all right. What do you guys think of Titan Speaker Man? His magnetic armor is extremely difficult to knock off and his twin hand cannons make him an offensive juggernaut. Does Titan Speaker Man stand a chance? If you want to find out, Hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the big showdown coming out soon. I've decided to make Skibbity Toilets their own series, which leaves us with four warriors in series nine. And four warriors in the Skibbity series, but everything's gonna go on hold because as of September 1st, we are officially in Halloween mode. And I'm gonna leave you guys with a little hint of who our first warrior is gonna be.